Welcome, welcome. Happy Monday, everybody. This is March 21st, and we are live from not New York. You know, New York sounds better because it has like two words. Live from Dal, Dal live from Dallas, Texas. Thank you. There you go. Live from Dallas, Texas. That sounds better. We are on the second day of spring, and I'm not sure why they decide that yesterday was the first day of spring, because, like, Boston... Okay, so the, the spring, the, the equinox, the sun or the moon, is in the highest part of the sky, but it snowed in New York, it snowed Boston, you know, the whole East Coast got hammered with snow. I bet they don't feel like it should be the first day of spring. It was cold here. It's cold everywhere. So we're going to officially make the first day of spring in a few weeks when it warms up. How's that? We're just going to change it. But it is daylight saving time now. So internationally, where if you guys are different places all over the world, just know that we're, we went forward an hour. So I think you're GMT minus five. I'm not sure of that, but the, you know, your time changed. I think we're, anyway, look it up. I hope you don't miss us. I put it in the email today that we were in a little bit different time frames, but you might have gotten it at four in the morning. So anyway, hello everyone all over. Welcome, welcome. We're happy to be here. We're just going to have all kinds of fun tonight. And I just got back from Atlanta. And I'll tell you, those ladies, you guys, I know why I do these workshops. It's because you all are just so amazing. You're so fabulous. Because I hate leaving. I hate getting on that airplane. I hate leaving. I hate, well, especially because Brett's, you know, Brett's not well. I hate leaving, but when I'm there, y'all are terrific, and it's really a lot of fun. So all those great ladies in Atlanta, I took, I brought back a whole bag of Hershey Kisses, and they were kisses for Brett to help make him better. <laughs> Germ-free kisses. So anyway, thank you, everybody. It was great to see everyone in Atlanta area. All right, so questions, we're going to follow questions and answers in our first 15 minutes and then go into our lesson tonight and hopefully you guys can learn something and be inspired. That's our goal. Here's the question. I watched the video on putting in an invisible zipper without having to use an invisible zipper foot. Do you have to buy an invisible zipper or can you use a regular zipper? Yeah, the coils on an invisible zipper, here I have one right here, the coils on an invisible zipper are different than a regular zipper. This is my zipper bin. So the coils on an invisible zipper are inside the zipper so that when you zip it up, it's smooth. Um, you can't take a regular zipper and make it an invisible zipper. They're two different kinds of zippers. You have to actually buy an invisible zipper and then put it in the method that we showed you. You don't have to have an invisible zipper foot um, because I showed you how to do it. In fact, I think an invisible zipper foot is a bad thing. I think it hampers putting it in because you can't see what you're doing. So that's why I showed you how to do it um, the way I learned, factory method. You use a zipper foot, but not an invisible zipper foot. And that's because with a zipper foot, you can move the needle and you can see exactly where you're stitching all the time and you can get your stitching exact. It's very, very, it's not hard to do. Just practice a few times. But an invisible zipper is different than a regular zipper, okay? I am fitting number 195 sweater set, size four. The armhole sleeve and bust are okay, but the shoulder seems too wide. Should I go down a size or just adjust the shoulder width by taking a dart? You should adjust the shoulder width, but don't take a dart. That's way overkill. Just let's say that this is the armhole, and this is your template. Remember, you have a template, and the template goes between the, t the two points. The template goes from the shoulder seam to the armhole. Just move it in. Instead of starting it here, just make a copy of the armhole. We'll pretend that that's a copy. You're just going to move it in here and then put this where the side seam is and just redraw the armhole. You don't need to take a dart. There's no reason to take a dart. That's kind of overkill. So just redraw the armhole. Just start it narrower and it'll probably come up a little higher on the side seam, but you're going to do the same in the front and the back. So it's going to be really, really easy. On your French curve, yes, this is the French curve. There are a series of blocks with grids. 
what is their purpose? Um, that's a really good question. Very good question because, uh, you know, the reason this is here, obviously it's to measure, but when you are making patterns, let me find a straight edge here. When you are making patterns, and let's say you've got a straight center front seam, then when you have a one inch square, it's how you find bias. So all of these, if you notice, are one inch squares on this grid. So what you do is you take one inch, and I'm going to take the nine, and I put the square on the straight line, and that creates the bias. So it creates a perfect 45 degree angle. So that's the reason you have the one inch squares on the French curve is so that you can easily lay down and create a bias off the grain line. So the grain line is straight, you take the one inch square and put the top of the square on the line, the bottom of the square on the line, and that creates your bias. So anywhere you have a straight grain you can create a bias. Okay? Do you still have any places available for the April fabric trip to New York? No. It is sold out. Sorry. It's completely full. In fact, it's over full. You know, we're, we have some, well, it doesn't matter, but we have some ladies driving a rental car behind the bus. And I'm not sure how they're going to do that because um, I don't know where they're going to park. But anyway, no, it's full. So probably come June, we'll announce the trip dates for April of 2017. Just maybe mark it on your calendar. But you can't, really, with only having one trip a year now, you can't wait a month before. You've really got to, I would say, the trip fills up about two months before. So I, I recognize you don't like to sign up too early, but um, plan on signing up at least two months in advance in order to get in for next year. That's probably my suggestion. Do you recommend making a muslin for Chanel's top? <clears throat> I would. Um, I don't think there's anything that can go wrong on Chanel's top. And if it does go wrong, you can fix it by, by tightening the neck edges into the side seam. <clears throat> but I'm a, I'm a muslin maker, you know. I mean, I obviously you're not going to make it out of muslin. You're going to make it out of knit. Uh, but I would. I just think, you know, I made the pattern. And once I made the pattern, I made a muslin to check the pattern just to make sure it was okay. Um... You know, a lot of, yesterday we had a one day, <clears throat> we had a lot of ladies there, and some of the ladies <clears throat> there had on their muslin, their wearable muslin, they made a muslin, they used fabric to make the muslin, they liked it so well that they, you know, were wearing them. So, not a bad idea, but I, I would just to be cautious, it, but it, get to, it probably depends too on how much you like the fabric that you're using it. If you really, really like the fabric, then make sure you make the muslin, okay? I want to make a pair of yoga pants using a one-way stretch woven. I know the circumference will be okay, but what about the crotch depth and length? Um, the crotch depth, you'll, the crotch depth is the length. So I guess you mean, okay. The crotch depth you'll probably want to add a little bit too. Add a little bit so that you'll have ease. Crotch length, don't add any ease. The crotch length is actually the depth of the pant. So don't add any ease to that at all or else it'll bag just like in regular pants. So you can have ease, when you talk about L, C, and D, you can have ease in length, you can have ease in circumference, you should not have any ease in depth. When it comes to depth, depth should never have ease. As a general rule, depth should have no ease, okay? When making the knit muslin tank from the 600 pattern, should I do the optional darts? Yes. Um, I'm, I'm going to assume you're talking the optional waist darts. The bust darts are need to be there. They need to be in place. The optional, the, the, I think they say optional of the pattern is probably why you're saying that. But the vertical darts are, that just make you look thinner. I mean, you know, yesterday we draped 20, 30 ladies in the one day yesterday morning in Atlanta and every time we did darts everybody said the same thing you know I mean it just everybody looks so much better so much thinner think Dolly Parton in a moo moo 
not and then you want to take it under the bust because you want to separate a, bu a large bust from a body. The if, if you hang something straight from the bust you're going to look big all the way down. Darts are positive. Once you stitch a dart you can't see the size of the dart so you want to stitch that dart. Definitely. Will you be bringing in any stretch denim fabric? Yeah we have some online right now. Um, but yeah I'm waiting for Look, there's a couple things brewing behind the scenes. Um, we've made some connections in Bangladesh. Bangladesh is where a lot of denim is being made right now. And we are doing a couple things. We are doing stone wash denim. Now stone wash denim, if you guys know this or not, stone wash denim is the garment is made and then it's literally washed with stones and they, you know, give a, a beaten appearance to the denim. But we're having three yard cut because you can't do it to fabric. We're having three yard yard cuts done in stone wash. So we'll sell them in three yard cuts. We're waiting on that to happen. Um, but again, because most denim is made out of the country, getting that denim back into this country, it's really a hard thing to find stretch denim, nice stretch denim. So anytime I find it, I buy it. Um, you guys see it. But it's also getting more and more expensive. And I keep thinking, this is denim. This is inexpensive. How can this cost this much? But it's simply because of the availability and the demand on denim, especially stretch denim right now. So we're always working on it. Just know, as soon as we get it, we've got some on the site right now. I think we've got a black and a blue. I have a 500 pattern. I need to bring the shoulders in a bit. Do I take it in at the center front? You do. It's a dart. Starts at center front right here at the neckline, tapers to nothing uh, at the hem. You do that in the front and in the back. Okay, and take it, bring it in the amount you need. It's a de it's a straight dart. Don't angle it. Don't, I mean, you know, don't make it more or less. Just whatever amount needs to come here, taper at the bottom. If through the tummy area you need more, if you if it's taken out too much or it's getting too tight, add at the side seams. But you've got to make that dart straight so that you can then put it on the fold. You want to be able to cut that tank on the fold. That tank top was a really fun little um, excerpt for us. It was, you know, we need tank tops, you know, and some of the feedback was, oh, I've got big arms and oh, I've got this. We need tank tops. I'm telling you, we use them over and over again and there's nothing better um, than a tank top. It takes no time to sew, but the fitting of it, you've got to get right. And so go back, because on the webcast, previous webcast, when we had, it was a pattern of the month, we did, the, we, we went through all the fitting. So make sure you tweak it, make sure you get it right, do all the tweaking, be patient with that process because you can sew it over and over again. And again, I make these tank tops in next to nothing time because I don't have to deal with the fitting. So be patient with that fitting process so that you'll get all the way through. I love getting my POM. Yay, my pattern of the month. Do you think you will ever put the sweater set in sometime this year? No, the sweater set was... Um, a year, I don't know, it was it was a while ago, so we won't do it again. We are going through the basics. Clearly we're going through the basics because I feel like there's, uh, we need to. There's a lot of new people to silhouette patterns, and I really feel like we need to go through those basics, um, really just to get everybody kind of leveled out. Even those people who have been with us for some time have bought like the classic blouse, but maybe they never made it, or they never got to it, or they you know the yoga pant the classic blouse uh, this is a princess scene blouse this year 709 you know it's interesting to me when people uh, in answering emails people will say or ladies will say you know I'm never gonna make this blouse let's get another one uh, you know I think I, I hope that's a premature decision I hope that after tonight you'll say oh boy I would have never thought I could have made that from that pattern but the goal is I, I'm building you the basics so that really we can use those basics, armholes, compare them to other things, and really establish this base and then we can kind of launch off, off the base. Is there a general rule when lengthening any top, jacket or blouse, two inches or more? You know, look you guys, I, it, no, there's no general rules. You know, but I do think for many of you, and see if you fall into this category, we are lengthening things too long. We're wearing them too long. If you're wearing them with leggings, they should go below the crotch. That's fine. But many of you are lengthening them to cover a tummy, to cover some things that you don't like, and that that ends up not being a positive look, so you really got to be careful 
when you're lengthening two inches, why are you lengthening? And um, what's the goal? And are you shaping the garment to where when you lengthen it, they're shaping above it? You know, again, those things kind of I get a little nervous at. Two inches is, it's not a lot, but just again, be careful of why you're lengthening it and, you know, what your goal is. Okay? How is Brett? Brett's good. Brett's good. You guys know that this is a long term treatment. Um, we had a PET scan last week. He does still have cancer, it is not gone. So we are looking at additional treatments. We're looking at radiate, you know, we're looking at all kinds of things. We don't know. We kind of take day by day around here. We keep our fingers crossed and our, you know, but he's feeling stronger. The, you know, we're taking day by day. Thank you to Atlanta, Evanly, especially. Evanly sent home a whole bag of chocolate Hershey kisses for Brett. They were germ free kisses, and Brett really appreciates that. Really, really appreciates all the goodwill. So thank you guys. But like I said, this is this is long term. So we're just doing our best. That's for sure. For any of you who have done this, you know that unfortunately it's not like a cold. It doesn't go away <laughs> anytime soon. Okay. Be ready? Questions out of the way? All right. Let's do it. Let's learn. First thing I want to do is fit. We did have yesterday in Atlanta, we had a lady who um, fit the 709. She fit the 709 Kelsey's blouse as a pattern of the month. I really could have picked any blouse. It wouldn't have mattered. I mean, um, any princess scene blouse, it wouldn't have mattered which one I picked. I picked 709 just because it's such a beautiful blouse. It is, the original was a Giorgio Armani. It was an $800 little silk blouse. To me, just absolutely feminine, beautiful. There's a portrait collar. That portrait collar, asymmetrical front, just really, really pretty. I just love it. There is a two-piece sleeve. The two-piece sleeve I brought into this garment simply so remember the armhole is the same in all the blouses so with the pattern 600 which was our um, pattern of the month if you want to put in a two-piece sleeve here it is it's in 709 so you don't have to change armholes same armholes on both patterns you can just take the two-piece sleeve and shift it over so this now is a basic princess seam blouse um, there it's very easy to fit I think easier even than the classic blouse so I want to go through the fitting I do want you to ask questions as we're going through these fittings because I think it's important to do so. Um, what I did first is, and I'll kind of bring this forward, um, this mannequin is me. Can I make the bottom layer of POM front wider so the V at the bottom disappears? Of course, that's all styling. You can do anything you want, but I wouldn't change the styling before I did the fit because whenever you're dealing with fit and with styling, you want to change one variable at a time. If you change too many things at one time and something goes wrong, you won't be able to track it back as to what went wrong. So I'd strongly suggest make one change and you know, kind of guide yourself slowly to make sure you're on the right path. Does the princess seam always go to the shoulder seam? No, princess seams by definition are just a combination of the bust art and the waist art combined in a seam line. And they can go, the as long as the bust dart is in the upper portion of the garment, so a princess seam can go to the armhole, it can go to the shoulder seam, it can go to the neck edge. If you look at 1600, it's a princess seam and it goes to the neck edge. So lots of great princess seams out there. This princess seam goes to the shoulder. The reason why princess seams to the armhole are a negative is because if I look at the distance between my armhole and my bust point it's very close and if I have a large dart a large dart has a hard time going that little area if it's like a D cup so if you notice as it goes to the shoulder I have much more length going all the way to the shoulder and a large dart it will you know engineering wise it's a much easier feat to go all the way to the shoulder than it is to go to the bust to the armhole so if you are a C or a D cup princess seams to the armhole probably have not worked well for you and that's why and I wouldn't recommend them simply because there's too large a dart in too small of space all right so what I did is and you only need these four pieces I've got the front 
the side front, the side back, and the back. I've got the sleeve, but you don't need to sew it in. Um, the front of the garment actually laps to the seam, so I'm going to go ahead and pin that in place. And I would put a pin somewhere down at the bottom just to kind of hold it in place. And you're doing this on yourself. Okay? So we're going to go in order. We're going to go with L. Length is from the base of the neck to the bust. And as I said yesterday, I'm just going to kind of repeat some of the things we talked about. If you are dealing with silhouette patterns and you are dealing with a princess seam, you will not need to lengthen or shorten the bust. It is not wrong. It has to be over three inches wrong in order to be wrong, and I'm not that wrong. So um, the princess seam will not have to be moved. I don't care how tall or short you are. Remember, all it has to do is be three inches within the bust circle, and like I said, I I'm not that far off. So you will not have to adjust length for the bust on the princess seam in this pattern, and it, no one will have to. Did you make the sleeve three-fourths inch on the blouse you were wearing? Um, no, it's full length. I just pulled it up. Okay? Because I like three-fourths sleeves. I like three-fourths, but if it's cold outside and it is kind of cool today, I could pull them all the way down if I was chilly. All right, so that's length. Okay, then we go to the back and we see if there's any length changes in the back. And in this particular case, because there is a princess seam, I can actually snug these in to the body a little bit more without having to worry about where length is. And let me explain that a little bit. When I'm doing a princess seam, there's an area of the body, it's called an expanded waist in pattern making. And simply it means for about four inches, I leave the circumference of the garment the same so that the waist is not really going to be one right spot. So when someone puts it on and you're trying to you know, hone it into your body a little bit more, you can actually bring it in at your waist and create a little bit of a dart back here. But to fit the general masses, that expanded waist will give it to where it fits everyone fairly well but you could come in and fine-tune it so that it fits you a little bit better. So you can't really have a waist problem because all you do is go in more where your waist is. So if you're standing with this on, just reach behind you, pick out where your waist is, and then just bring it in a little bit more. Very easy to do through these two seams, and you see that looks a lot better. When you're dealing with a princess seam in the back of the body, it's always going to look a little bit better as it silhouettes and you won't lose mobility because it's at the bottom half of the body. So the back of the female is really an attractive part of the body. I don't care how much you weigh or what size you are, you still have a concave back. So it's really nice to utilize it and that's why I put darts and seams and things like that in the back of the garment rather than just leaving the back blank which is what a lot of clothing companies do. It's really a pretty place to accentuate, all right? So I've made that fit. So that's length. Those are your only two length issues. Base the neck to bust, you won't have to change. And then the back, just bring it in and silhouette the body a little bit better, okay? All right, circumference. Yesterday, again, we talked about circumference quite a bit. And if I were you and if I were at home and you, you get this for the bust, so you should measure something you wear because this is a woven garment and you should build in the ease by measuring something you wear you're building that ease into the garment you're measuring and pick out that size be careful when you measure I mean you know because if you make a mistake and you read the tape measure wrong and you go through all the efforts of making a muslin and then you find out you're wrong you've wasted all that time so I always say measure two or three blouses don't just measure one measure some of the things you're wearing and see if they're coming in around the same number just kind of little, do a little research on you. Some time ago, I think you all remember, we put up a favorite garments page. If you go all the way on the front page of the site, all the way over to features and click on features, in the middle column at the bottom, I think we started nicknaming it the bread chart because I didn't want to put it up and he, he did put it up. He created the chart and put it up. Um, and I'm glad he did. I mean, it really is helpful for you all, but you can print that out and you can fill it in. 
um, favorite blouse circumference, favorite blouse armhole, those numbers will give you a lot of indications about what you're going to redo on this blouse pattern. Okay? All right, so circumference. If you have somehow made a mistake and you've gotten into a circumference and it's too small, I wouldn't try to adapt it. I would make a, a different size to where you're going to go by the bus, that's what you're going to use, don't use anything else. People say to me all the time, but what if it's too wide in the shoulders? What if it's this? All those things are fictitious in a silhouette pattern. These are drafted differently. These are better. They will fit you. Please, you know, again, I've, I've draped so many different sizes. These are not like any other patterns out there. They do not grade the same. Therefore, we know you're not getting wider in the shoulders. We know you're not getting bigger in the neck edge, and they really do fit beautifully. So go for the bust. They won't be too wide in the shoulders. If they are, I'll show you how to fix it. Is that a deal? All right. So we're going to pick for the bust. And if you have to make the waist thicker, you've got all these seams. If you add an inch seam allowance on these seams, then you'll be able to let it out without any problem. But again, keep go for the bust, pick the sizing by the bust, and leave it from there. Okay. So circumference, we've got it, we're okay. Depth, when I start into depth, I'm going to start at the top of the garment and work down. So that means the very first thing I'm going to do is pick up a shoulder seam. And I want, the shoulder seam is going to take away any gapping that goes around the armhole. When I take up the shoulder seam, I'm going to take it up at the edge of the shoulder seam. And I'm going to taper to nothing at the neck edge. It's just, the shoulder seam is a straight angle line. I take it up here, I taper to nothing here. Okay? That will take it and clean up all of this armhole stuff. The next one I do is I put a little dart right here. This will not be in the final garment, but you can see it cleans up any little gapping that I have going on here. And in the, my particular case, in this particular case, I made a C cup, and I'm actually a D cup. So that extra little dart will not be in the final garment, but it's the dart is starts at the side seam, tapers to nothing at the princess seam. Because you've done it in the front and you've shortened the seam, you're going to do it in the back as well. Now for some of you, this is kind of a review and you already know that and that's the good news. And if you know it, I'm going to always suggest that you start teaching. Start helping these people who don't know it, because a lot of people need help, hands-on help with this. Okay, see how much tighter that is all the way around the armhole. That's what we want. We don't want any gapping around the armhole. There's only two things that control that armhole gap, is it's the shoulder seam and the dart. This is not in the final garment. That's why we make a muslin, so we can fix this, take it away, and not have it in the final garment. Okay. What is the difference between 1825 and 709? 1825 is a jacket. Um, 709 is a blouse. 1825... Yeah, I mean... I, <laughs> I mean, I could list 20 differences. Let, maybe I should put it back to you and say, just in what sense are you thinking they're similar? Or, you know, all of our jacket patterns are jacket sleeves and tie interfacing. The ease is different. The sleeve is different. The armhole size is different. You know, lots of differences from the blouses. That's why they're in different uh, categories. Okay? Okay. So, that does our depth. Some of you depth will be a sway back. So when you come to the back, you'll have to take a little pinch across the back here. If you're not sure if that's right, take the dart at center back, taper it to nothing at the side seam, and see if that's better on you. If it's not better, then take it back out. Leave it alone. Keep in mind this is a base. Whenever you're dealing with a base and you're doing the back and the side back and the side front, you can just switch out the fronts for style and get lots of different looks. Okay? The other option is here in the front 
is if you want to narrow the shoulder seam. The easiest way to do this is not even changing the armhole is with the princess seam and I'll take a dart at out of this piece. Don't take it out of the side piece. Don't take it out of the seam because it's uh, this, the side piece is too narrow and if you take away more it'll distort the style. So just take a little dart here, taper to nothing above the bust point right out of that piece, right out of the center front piece. Okay. So the muslin should not have sleeves. The muslin should not have sleeves. You can't clearly see what's wrong once you put a sleeve in. Wait to put the sleeves in um, or, or do, you don't even really need to put the sleeve in. I'm going to put the sleeve on. I mean I know it sews in okay. I, that's not why I want to put it in. I want to put the sleeve in because it's a two-piece sleeve and I want to make sure the circumference is okay and I want to make sure the bend of the sleeve is okay. But hang on, we're not there yet. Okay? All right. Now, one alteration I've had on this pattern is in this neck area, there's been a little gapping in through here. So I've taken a dart from this point and tapered it over to nothing here. And it just tightens this up right in the front. It's right in the center front piece. You'll do it to both pieces and it lays flat. Whenever you have anything that goes over the bust and it's below the bust and above the bust, sometimes those angles are incorrect. Even if it has darting, sometimes those angles are incorrect. So this is why you make a muslin so that you can make sure that it goes over the bust, comes back into the neckline, and lays flat. And so again, the dart starts here, tapers all the way over to nothing on the princess seam line. You have to go all the way over to nothing so that your pattern will lay flat. I know y'all know that. All right. Very nice. And again, you can see that it's not like the tweaks are really that, and they should be tweaks. When I say they're tweaks, you know, if you're overhauling, it's because you're in the wrong size. That's why I would take the time to make a new size and get as close as possible because it will be much less frustrating for you and the process will really be a, little, a lot easier. Why didn't you use a D cup to start with? Simply because I was trying to show you um, this alteration and if I used exactly what I already know fits me, then you wouldn't be able to see any alterations. So I know I'm a D. I use the C so that you could see this come into play. And I also am going to show you on the pattern so you can see the pattern as well. So you can see I've changed the front, I've changed the shoulder, I've changed this. Women sometimes will say to me, oh I've made all these alterations. There's no such thing as a pattern making producing a pattern that's going to be right in every area. There's no way we can handle the angle of the shoulder for every person out there. I need you to know that information. I need you to be able to understand it. I need you to be able to tweak your garment. B, C, and D cup. Again, there's no way we can get every cup size right and make sure it is. Some of you, I had an email today of a woman who thought she was a C cup. She went and got a bra fitting last week and find out she was a double D. So if she thought she was a C and picked out the C cup, then she would have to know how to fix that C cup or at least know to go to the D. For those of you who are larger than a D, you need to know how to fix that. For many of you, this angle of, of the neck or how hollow it is, is different on every person. So all these little angles are, are impossible to get massively across the board when you're dealing with a million women. So it's why we teach, it's why we want you to understand it, and hopefully you'll recognize this is not a lot of changes to make to get that garment looking just really, really beautiful. If we take a dart, do we have to add length at the bottom? No. When I took this dart, the fullness was hanging out right there. It wasn't hanging out down there. So anytime you make an alteration when you're dealing with darting and fitting, darts are isolated to a certain area. If you notice the shoulder seam, where was the extra hanging out? Right here. If you notice this, where was the extra hanging out? Right here. Bottom hasn't changed a bit. Nothing's changed a bit at the bottom. So the concept of if you take it out, you have to add it here, that's a false concept. It's been taught and yet it's, it's not accurate. And if I take it out here, you've got to think logically, why would I put it back? At any point, where would I put it back and why would I put it back? Don't put it back. Unless you can come up with a reasonable answer as to why you would put it back, don't. Do you wash knit fabrics before making a garment? I do. You know, I mean, do you have to? No. 
I do. I wash everything before I do it just because I'm going to wash it afterwards and I want to make sure I can wear it. Will you, sure one, will you show, I'm sorry, once more how to get the pattern flat after adjusting the bust dart and adjusting for the sway back? Yes. Let's go to the pattern here for a minute and let's pretend we're in each piece. Each piece that I've done a change, I've got the pattern and I'm going to lay the pattern on and I'm going to make the change. Right here, this is the front piece and what I did is I took a little dart here and that dart tapered to nothing over, over on the opposite side. So the reason you use the change here and the pivot point over here so that the pattern will completely lay flat once you're done. Alright, then I did the bust dart here. That's on the side seam. And so here's my little dart. It tapers to nothing there and you can see again my pattern still lays flat. And then when you do it to the front, you do it to the back of a princess seam and you're going to do it in the same place and you're going to do it in the same amount. So again, my pivot points all the way over at the edge. Anytime I have a dart in a garment and if I stop stitching that dart internally, if I stop the dart internally, I have to stitch the dart on the sewing machine like the tank top we did last Monday. That has a bust dart. And notice that dart stops internally. It doesn't go all the way to center front. It stops within the bust circle. And in order to achieve that dart, I have to sew it on a sewing machine. Because I don't want to sew this on a sewing machine and because I've got a princess seam, when I make this dart, I can, ta I can stop it at the princess seam. My pattern still lays flat because this is called flat pattern and I don't have to stitch it on the sewing machine. Therefore, it doesn't show in my final garment. There's darts all over the garment, but they don't always show. After you make the side dart, would you add length back into the side seam hem? Because you said you were removing from excess from the sleeve. It looks like it's coming up a tiny bit at the hem. When you take this away, do not add back. No. Forget, I don't care what it looks like or what you think on here. When you take it away, it's because there's extra gapping here and at the armhole. Do not add at the bottom. You will see it might, like I said, look a little different here. Do not add back. Anytime you are darting, do not add back. When you go to the back, to the, to the um, sway back, if you were to add, do a sway back, I didn't have a sway back here, and I didn't have a sway back here because I had princess seams that I could take in. But if you had sway back there, you would come to the back piece, and again, I would measure how far down it is and how big it is, and that's where I would take the dart. Because the sway back would go into another piece, I would take it from here, I would take it through this piece, starting at the side back, and continue it to the side back seam, because that's where it goes on here. So put the two pieces together and make that dart as if it were one piece, even though it goes through two. Okay, just make sure your seams align so that as you sew that seam, it will be the same length. Okay? What, oh, I'm sorry, would you do that bust to bust on the under piece? Yes. Yes. Yeah, the under piece is, I'm assuming you're talking about this front piece. This piece is gapping too. You just can't see it because it's underneath. But there's no way the top one can be gapping if the bottom one's not gapping. Remember, you're changing a pattern. So I only have to do it once, and I only have to do one side, and I know the other side's going to follow the same thing because I'm going to change my pattern. Once I cut this new, um, both piece, the adjustment will be in both pieces. Okay? I made a classic black 600. It fits great, looks great as well. Wonder if I should raise the armhole if it feels too low when I move, but visually it does not look like it. Those armhole decisions are all yours. They're called style issues, and you are the queen, the champion, the ruler as to what you decide to do with those armholes. But if I were you, I would play around. I would measure things I have. I would do a little bit of homework. You know, I, I think somebody said to me a couple weeks ago, and I think it's really true. She said all these years she's never been able to fit. And because now she can finally fit, she never really thought about <laughs> what she could do after she got through the struggles of fit, like playing with fabric or experimenting. Once you start to gain a little bit of confidence, and you are gaining a tremendous amount of confidence with these patterns, and you get the blouse right, and you get the garment made, and you like it, 
then move on and, st and make it better. It it'll be a progressive little step. Do I want smaller armholes? Do I want this? Do I want that? And don't be afraid to change it up every while. And I would just keep a running notepad as to what you've changed and what you like. So that when a you know, couple months pass and you haven't made that blouse and you go back to it, you can reference your notes and say, that's right, I like that you know, 20 inch armhole better than that 21 inch armhole, I'm going to make the 20 inch armhole. So don't expect to remember everything in your head. Make notes so that you can reference them and title it under the uh, topic of the classic blouse. Keep it on your computer, you know, however you want to do it. It's very, very helpful. And it's a lot of fun. You guys, you've struggled with patterns for so long, it's not fun. But once you start getting into patterns, you'll, you'll like them as much as I do. They're a lot of fun. They really are. All right. Does the dart pinch go straight across the seam allowance or stop at the seam? You're going to have to be more specific as to which dart pinch. This dart pinch stops at the seam. This dart pinch here goes through the side seam and goes to each of the prince's seams. The dart pinch at the sway back starts at center back and goes through the side back. So it just depends on which one it is. If you add these darts, what do you do about grain line? Continue it from the bottom. Grain line is not affected in any of these. You still draw grain line straight. The side panel, grain line is straight. Grain line is not affected at all. Still stay with the top of the grain and just restore it down to the bottom. Okay. Keep in mind, grain line is only for visual effects in a blouse. If I take, I mean, if you look at the side piece, everything's off grain. The whole entire piece is off grain. I could put it off grain on the pattern. The only reason I'm doing it on grain is in case for some visual effects it looks a little bit better, but that's bias, that's bias. There's bias all over the place. So when you deal with a blouse, you don't need to measure grain. It's not important unless it's a stripe, unless it's for visual effects. Otherwise, grain line is completely overrated on a blouse. Okay? Good question, though. When you increase the dart on the tank top, didn't you add to the hem and taper to nothing at the fold? Yes, but that's a different issue. That, Like I said, that's why it's good to kind of think things through. The dart I did on the tank top didn't have a dart in the back. So when I increased the dart on the tank top, in order for the side seams to match, I added length at the bottom so that the side seams were matched. Here where I've taken away, I've t I have got a princess seam on both sides. So I've taken away here, I've taken away here. The side seam still matches. I don't need to restore anything back and everything still aligns. Okay? But these are all good clarification, you guys. So um, I can tell that you're working through it and trying to figure it out, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, once we've done fit, though, I want to move on because I've got some great styling options for you, and I think you're going to really like them. So I'm going to move her back, and we're going to start from the very easiest is the one I've got on. And so what I did is I took fabric. It's fabric number 733. Even if you're not going to buy it, I want you to look at it because 733, it's an Italian, it's a, it's a reversible gray, and it ha it's like a cotton, um, anyway, doesn't matter. But I want you to take a look at 733. The reason being is it's perfect, it's the top I have on, and it's perfect for this pattern to really simplify. So the goal was, first off, to do it in a knit. So, and also, my goal was to use dark, because it's a princess seam, I could use dark seams at the side, so I used the darker side for the side and the lighter for the front, and, and you can see visually what it does is it slims me. The sleeves are going to match the darker also, the only thing lighter is going to be the middle and it brings your focal point, brings your eye right to that point. So I only had to use four pieces and the sleeve I used a knit sleeve, so I used my knit armhole. I drew my knit armhole onto the blouse and I did that by taking my knit armhole here and you can see it's smaller so I extended the side seam up and then drew in my knit armhole. Then I used my knit sleeve because there's no reason to have a two-piece sleeve when you're using a knit garment and that made it really easy. When I went to sew it, I crossed the two pieces and sewed them together in the princess seam. 
No edge finishing. No, nothing's finished. No collar, no facings, no nothing. I love it. It's simple. And then I used the crystals on the front just because I wanted that focus right in the front. And I love those little crystals. They're really fun to kind of play with and work with. So it is shaped but not tight. It's kind of like a sweatshirt, but it's better than. And I just really like it. Though that two-tone kind of a sweatshirty fabric is what you're looking for. And um, reversible works even better because I can use the best of both worlds and the best of having two different colors that coordinate automatically, which is what these did. Okay. Do we need to pay attention to grain line? This is Oh, when do we need to pay attention to grain line? Only in, only in garments that are over 20 inches in length. That's when that grain, if something's off grain like in pants, is that grain will start to twist and it will not hang straight. But in all these blouse pieces, you can see the blouse pieces are too short. They can't twist if they're off grain. And in manufacturing all the time, like especially I'm going to use this floral as an example, when you look at a floral, there's no grain. I mean, there's no visual grain, so you can't tell it's on grain or not. So I can skew those pieces off grain at least 10% and still have no twisting. And I can get a lot more pieces on my fabric than if I'm trying to be respective of the grain all the, all the time. Okay? All right. So then the next version that I did, and all we're going to do here is we're going to add a little bit of fringe to the collar. Love this fabric. This is a rayon. Earlier we talked about washing. I cut two samples whenever I whenever I wash. Before I wash, to determine sometimes am I going to dry clean or am I going to wash? Now not I mean not in stuff I'm clearly going to wash, but in, in a rayon I'm curious about how much shrinkage. Rayons are known for shrinkage. And expensive rayons shrink a whole lot more than nicer rayons. So I cut two pieces of fabric the same. I washed one. After I washed it, I compared it back to my original. This particular fabric shrank zero, lost nothing. Couldn't even tell the difference, okay? Then I put it into the dryer, compared it back, and this is the two pieces. You can see that they lost nothing in the washer or in the dryer. Rayon fabric lost nothing. The only reason you can tell it's washed is because you can see the edges are a little more frayed than they are on the original but there was no loss of color, no loss of size, either one. The washer usually loses color, the dryer usually uses, loses size, but that came out perfect. So when I do this, a lot of times I won't wash my fabric simply because why? I, I know it's going to be okay. In this case, I still washed it, but I'm saying you could get by without it. All right, and what I did do, because this is what they call a portrait collar, it's a partial roll collar. That means that the um, neck edge has a curve to it, and the outside edge is just beautiful. Again, I just love this blouse. So I went ahead and added some fun little fringe, and then I put a little ribbon on top. And this ribbon, I, I bought the whole thing, and we've got a little bit of this fabric. So if you order this fabric, I'll probably throw in, if you get some ribbon in it, don't be surprised because um, the whole roll wasn't that expensive. So I, if you order that this orange floral, it's a new fabric. I just think it's so beautiful. I just love the look. Um, then we'll put in a we'll put in a couple yards of the ribbon, and you can do whatever you want to it. You don't have to use it, but you can do if you want. Orange is the newest thing for spring and it's the biggest color and what I loved about this is I can't really wear orange, but this is great because there's so many other colors that that it's got orange in it, but it's just a really pretty fabric. And it's it's a rayon. Um, so putting trim in that collar is something that I really wanted you to see and be able to do. This one is a blouse I did years ago. Um, did a rolled sleeve. This has got a zipper in that collar. I don't even know from where you are if you can see it, but I love that little zipper that just goes along the edge and kind of fastens in. It looks really nice. Okay. Then what I want you to see is you can do the whole pattern again. You know, the goal is to kind of take knits and use a few pieces and then kind of add the pieces all in. And I wanted you to see this. This is just a real summery little outfit. This is 709, but what you can see is that I did not, I just left it open. And I put one button at the waist. So it really looks like just a great little jacket. It's unlined, two-piece sleeve. 
I'm sorry, in this case I didn't use a two-piece sleeve because this is a stretch woven. I went ahead and drew on my sweater knit armhole and I put on my one-piece sleeve because I was going to push these up or else make them three-quarter. But again, this is the blouse. You can just see that I just put one button here at the waist, did the collar, did everything exactly like it was. You could do this collar in a contrast and I think it'd be really pretty. But then choose a color underneath that's the tank and then a great pair of spring pants, white pants would be a great look. It's a great look. Very simple to do. Very great look. But just open up that asymmetric. Another thing I've thought about, I mean I could have made so many samples of these, was you can cut this neckline all kinds of different ways. And even if you notice if I just take away one pin, here I'll do it on this one, because the blouse itself has a facing, the whole inside is faced, Notice that I can just put in one pin here, I mean one button there, and leave one down, and it's just a really cute look. So you can see I can get in, into all kinds of different interesting necklines and really have a lot of fun with it. Okay, culotte pattern is absolutely wonderful in ITY knits, thank you. Have you tried it in any wovens or stretch cottons? Um, I, the culotte pattern I think is too full for a stretch cotton, number one. You'd probably have to take some of that fullness away. Uh, what was the other I2 or what, sorry? Have you tried any wovens or stretch cotton? Boy, I, w I don't know. I don't think I'd try a woven or a stretch cotton. Now, I could be wrong, but I think I'd stick to the ITY knit or something, a knit that's really lightweight. ITY is perfect for it because it's just got such great drape. But we've got some ITY knits that are coming that are just going to knock your socks off. So I would do the same thing. I would just make it in a different, actually, ITY. I've got some cotton knits that are nice, though. They're going to be great drapes. And it'll, it'll all be in probably first part of next week. I have a problem with my pattern pieces. I have two number nine back facing pieces. Oh, thank you. Glad you said that. Glad you asked that. I'm going to do two things. I'm going to show you how to draw a back facing. Uh, I did talk to the company who prints these patterns out today and they're random. Some have the back facing, some don't have the back facing. We'll ship you a back facing, but it's going to take us a week to get these printed and start to get them out to you all. So I'm going to show you how to draw a back facing for the size you have. This is the back and the back facing is just tracing the neck edge, tracing the shoulder edge, and then connecting the two. You want to go down about uh, four inches and then you're going to draw a line that connects the two. You want to make it as wide as the seam because you're going to get it anchored in that seam. So trace the neck edge, trace the shoulder seam, go down four inches and then connect that. Now this is going to be crazy but we'll mail you all a back facing if you need a back facing. Um, somehow they when they go to print those pattern pieces and we even check them afterwards and we didn't catch it. They change them all around to make sure they get the best layout and when they put them back on they put on two five through eight W's. So email me Peggy at silhouettepatterns.com. Don't do it until you're sure you don't have the facing because it, it was random. For whatever reason some of them had it and some of them didn't. So we have no clue kind of how to do this other than we'll mail you a, a back facing. But if you need one just email me, tell me you need a back facing for 709, give me your name and address, and give us about a week and we'll start mailing them out, okay? Thank you for saying something though, I appreciate it. How many armholes do you have? Is it just two knit or woven? I have four armholes. I have my sleeveless armhole, I have my knit armhole, I have my blouse armhole, and I have my jacket armhole. And I give you those armholes in progressive order from smallest to largest. That's generally how they go. The jacket has is usually the same size as a blouse, but it has a shoulder pad, so therefore it's larger. Sometimes the sleeveless and the knit is the same size, except that, you know, depending on height, sometimes the sleeveless is going to be smaller than the knit. So it just depends on, um, earlier she said it. She said, you know, what if I just wanted smaller? It, it's kind of all up to you. It's kind of how large busted you are, what your bras look like, how much coverage you want, but your armhole can go up and it can be pretty small and pretty tight for sleeveless, but for knit it might need a little more room. So 
You should have four armholes. You know, you might have, I don't think you'll have five, but you might only have three. Okay? I have three. Does that help? What's the pattern number what? Oh, the pattern number that has the wrong piece is 709. It's the pattern of the month. That's why I want you to know how to draw this facing because don't I don't want you held up waiting for this piece to come. It's it, you know because it's going to be a week before we can print them. So, you know, understand how to do this and then you can get it and then, you know, so that you'll have the right piece, we'll mail it to you, but don't get held held up by having this one piece. All right? And the center back of the facing is on a fold just like the back. So you line up, this is the same. Go down four inches, trace the neck edge, trace the shoulder edge, and then just connect the two. Easy, and Very easy to do. And like I said, I don't want it to hold you up, but we'll ship the pattern. But again, we're getting them printed, so it's going to be a little while before you um, get into it. But go through your pattern. Make sure you have it. Please don't have us mail it to you if if you have it already. Okay? Any hint on the next POM? Jacket, blouse, shirt, pants. This is March 21st. The pattern of the month for March is 709. We're only in March. Remember, we take it day by day. We're not looking to April. We're only in March. Okay? <laughs> Do you have any suggestions on how to tame a knit that rolls? The rolling cut edges make it difficult to sew an accurate seam. It does. No. Just be patient with it. Just put them face together. And then, um, you know, just be patient with the process. Generally, you don't have that many seams. So I don't have any clues. You can iron it. If you press the edge, sometimes it has a little more stability to it. But it just takes a little more time. Well, on the missing piece on a PDF, you guys, we can't do that because um, PDFs are not, our, the size of PDFs is not an accurate size. You know what? We're having this debate here because I forgot to have this debate before you guys came here. So maybe we could do that. Maybe we can do that. We'll look into that. But even so, if you need the piece, let us know and then we'll come up with how we can best do it. It would be great if we could send you a PDF. But I don't know that we can. Anyway, we'll, we'll figure that out behind the scenes. The, obviously, we work in a file called Gerber. And I don't know how Gerber transfers to PDF. Gerber is not a file that I can send you because you all don't have that program. <laughs> so we can't send it just as it is. We'll have to make sure that there's no translation. We'll work on that, but it's a great idea and a great suggestion. So thank you. Fabric number 733, on all the fabrics are numbered. If you hover your mouse over the fabric, you'll see like the newest fabrics that we just put up are like eight. 38. I, I don't know what they are. So go back approximately five pages or so and you'll see, it, it might take you a little while, but they're all numeric order from highest, the, the newer fabrics we put on higher, go back a little bit. There, again, the reason I want you to look at that fabric, it's the fabric I have on, is so that you can see the characteristics of why I chose that fabric for the top I made. Okay? You guys, this has been way too much fun for me. I just love doing these. I love that you all, you know, we've, it's just an amazing thing that we've done here, the webcast, but also you guys learning, listening, moving forward, being able to tap into, um, you know, what we're doing, being able to apply it. It's all really, really important. People, for some reason, I've had a lot of questions lately on why do you do them free? That's a good question. No. <laughs> the reason we do them free is because it actually saves us a tremendous amount of time. Um, as you know, when you set up a company and when we started Silhouette Patterns, the goal was to help women know 
have success. It's a product. You're offering a product. You want to help people have success with that product. So how do you do that? You answer questions. I mean, that's kind of a no-brainer. The questions that come in, come in, were coming in, they were the same questions over and over and over and over. And so what I learned was what you all didn't know. But I needed a format where I could give you the answers, the same answers, massively, and so it would save us a lot of time, and that's really what these webcasts have done. They save us a tremendous amount of time. Not that we don't get the same questions over and over. You all know we do. Some of you who have been watching a long time probably get frustrated over it. You tell me how patient I am, but if I were you, I would suggest that you sit there and listen to the questions and answers and go through and answer them before I do. And that way, you're kind of teaching yourself and you're reconfirming that you know the answers to the questions. That will help you and it will also help those who are just asking those questions to begin with. Okay, The process is a good one because it helps us massively get out the correct information and that that's just priceless for us. We do feel responsible for your success as a pattern company. You guys have to watch. Someone said to me a little while ago, when will I know it all? And, and I don't know the answer to that, I, but I do remember when I took tennis and I said to my teacher, when will I get good? And he said, I can't answer that. It's how much you practice. And, and I think that advice applies here. It's how much you practice. Don't be afraid to practice. So what fabric would not ravel at all even after washing. Oh, so that fabric, no, this fabric would not ravel, that's correct, because it's a double-faced knit, and so it, it doesn't curl at the edges, it's got great body, it's got great drape, it's really nice, but it has a very casual, I know you can't see it face on, has a very casual sweatshirt type feel to it. It's just really nice, it's really fun. This blouse here, This is a beautiful silk, beautiful silk. And we have some beautiful silks online, you guys. Make it up, you know, try something maybe less expensive, a little sweatshirt like what I've got on, get the fit down, and then go for something really beautiful. It's a great blouse. Alrighty? All right, so we're gonna see you in a couple of weeks. It will be April by the time we see you, March and spring will be full bloom, hopefully. We'll be through the snow, maybe. Um, in a couple of weeks, we also go to New York. And for those of you going to New York, we are very excited. We'll have a great trip. For those of you not going to New York, I will bring lots of goodies back for you. So that's exciting. Also, I will be shopping for you when I'm in New York. How's that? Anyway, we'll see you in two weeks. Until then, happy sewing, you all. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Bye.